welcome back to my youtube channel vibe is precious hi guys it's the video i'm feeling very much good it's your girl vibe is precious i'm back again with another reaction so guys today we're going to be reacting to muslim man married to a non-muslim woman guys this sounds like an interesting video so let's just get right into it Ah, somebody's asking about, can a Muslim marry a non-Muslim? Can a, mar a Muslim marry a non-Muslim? The general answer is no. Just if you want a fast answer on that, it's no. Allah alam. But here's why. When you say a non-Muslim, you've included everybody that's not Muslim. That includes atheists, Buddhists, Hindus, everything. Allah said in the Quran, it's believers marrying believers. When there are special occasions that occur, there is permission and it has limits. Islam has a concept, it's very nice, called rights and limits. Rights, but limits. Even though the Sahabi, radiallahu anhu ajmain, traveled all the way to China, they traveled all the way into Spain, across the northern part of Africa. They, uh, Islam went everywhere. But even though they went to all these places, they were not allowed to marry the women unless the women became believers. They had to be believers. Even when Allah speaks about the Ahl Kitab, the women from them, there's two conditions there that are real clear. They have to be believers in the book and they have to be virgins. And here in Australia, <laughs> I heard about the beach in the summertime. Okay, forget about it. The reality is, many times, I've visited so many communities. I visit three or four communities every week, 52 weeks a year. So after visiting maybe 300 communities, 400 communities, every single year, I'm telling you, it's absolutely the same problem over and over and over. When I'm getting ready to leave, a brother always comes up to me. Brother, I need to talk to you in private. Brother, I need to talk to you in private. I just got to ask you one thing. See, I got to talk to you. Please, please. And then we step over to the side. And the first words from his mouth is, see, my wife, she's not a Muslim. And here's my problem. I said, no, no, you already told me the problem. You just told me the problem. Your wife's not a Muslim. Because it's going to get worse. Do you have any children? No. And I said, then just get away quick before you do. Because if you're already having problems, you think it's going to get better after you have children? No. No, it's not. You cannot make these women become believers. A lot of men think they can do that. A lot of men have this idea that they're some kind of macho, you know, religious wonder who are, they're going to just do amazing things and this girl is going to convert to Islam. And by the way, he doesn't even pray. Or barely, you know. Doesn't even know how to make wudu. And now he's going to go out here and grab this girl and he's going to twist her brain around and she's just going to fall in love with him and he's going to lead her straight to Allah. <laughs> this is really sad. And if they have children, it gets even worse. There is really no Islamic state on earth today. There is no Khalifa. There's no Islamic state. You cannot really and truly guarantee that you are able to give the proper rights to your wife or to your children when you try to do this kind of thing, when you marry a woman that's not a Muslim. Even if she's Ahl Kitab. Because, and I have talked to some of these women. Alhamdulillah, some of them will enter Islam and that's beautiful. But for those who don't enter into Islam, what happens 
They wind up resenting the husband. They start working against him. They start figuring ways to mess him up so that he won't pray or that he won't fast. They'll cook something. Oh, I forgot you're fasting, but I made this meal. Won't you go ahead and eat it? They'll purposely expose him to things, trying to get him away from the dean. They become shaitan to him. And when they have children, they use that against him. I'm not saying every woman does that, but that's the rule. It's not the exception. So if you find a woman that's a real believer, that really follows her book, that's great. But I doubt you're going to find one who's that religious who wants to come over and marry a terrorist, you know. <laughs> I got to wonder about that. Because they believe there's something wrong with us. Why would they be coming over to us? Huh? I remember one sheikh was talking about a brother brought a lady to him. This was in upstate New York. The imam was saying that here comes this brother, brings the lady in, and he says, she's Ahl Kitab, we want to get married. He said, okay, step out of the room. He goes, huh? He said, I want to talk to her. Step out of the room. So he said he started talking to her. He asked her, he said, uh, you're a Christian? She said, oh, more or less. He said, um, okay, you go to church? Nah. <laughs> you read the Bible? No. Do you pray? Nah. Do you know the Ten Commandments? What's that? <laughs> Can you read the Lord's Prayer? Uh, yeah. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep, or something like that, right? <laughs> it's not even close, by the way. That's what little kids say. So this is a girl, no clue, right? Just Christian by name. He brought the brother back in and he said, okay, I can't do this marriage. He said, Akhi, she's Ahl Kitab, Ahl Kitab. He said, Ahl Checkbook. <laughs> yeah, watch out. It's not going to benefit her, and it's not going to benefit you to have a marriage like that. You don't want to make her miserable. Let her go her way. Guys, honestly, like, I just understand what he's trying to say. And the truth is that he's effortlessly funny. Like, he's a very, very funny imam. Like, is the truth. If you don't marry someone that is a believer, or someone that at least has a fear of God in them, or read the Bible, or pray, then it's going to be very hard for you. And the best advice to give was just let her go. Because he said it that if you're fasting, she'll be like, oh my God, I made this nice meal. And you're going to have some, this kind of things, like trying to, you know, distract you from doing the right thing that you want to do. And it's really, really devastating. Like you won't even be loving her anymore. You guys just be having arguments and issues. And I understand what you're saying. Like when you have kids, it become worse. Like she start giving the, like the, um, the reasons like, Okay, you have, we have a child together and you're acting this way. You decide to abandon us and do this. You don't eat family dinner with us. Why are you fasting? Like, just trying to distract you from where you're supposed to be. And he said it already. Like, you start behaving like a devil. Like, start working for the devil. Like, you start asking yourself, like, who is this person? So, you just need to find someone that believes. Like, it's more like saying, like, a very strong Muslim is trying to get married to an atheist. Like, someone that doesn't even believe both in God or Allah. Nothing. The person just lives on earth. Like, those people that just believe that everybody came from um, this space and all those kind of people. Like, you will find it very hard to live with them and share beliefs with them and make a happy home with them. Because it's also going to be argument, trying to force her to go to church or trying to force him to go to church. Because it's not basically only the women. Like, but the men too. Like, you could actually come across a man that doesn't even give... A dem about religion, both Christianity, both Islam. He's just living on this world. You understand? So, guys, that was just all I have to say. And honestly, I went to check more of his videos. Yusuf Etis, that's his name. And I just love how funny it was. Why he was trying to, you know, teach and pass on information. So, go to today's reaction. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe. I love you guys so much. See you in the next one. Signing out, precious. Bye.